Hello everyone and welcome to the webinar on Now Trending, which covers Milestone 2 in History 113 and History 114. I'm your learning community facilitator, Natalie Sweet. Before we begin talking about completing Milestone 2, I want to remind you that all work for this milestone and other milestones should be completed within your e-materials. Now, if you have experienced problems with the e-materials not submitting or uh, any other technical glitches that seem like maybe it's, maybe it's reporting that there's been a section that you've not completed but you know you have after double checking to make certain that section has been submitted, if you ever run into a problem like that while you're working, in the bottom right corner of your e-materials, you're going to find a little, what looks like a little green button, it's the bottom right corner and it looks like a little comment bubble that's within that green button, click on that. That is the Sumo Help Desk. If you're experiencing a technical problem with the e-materials, they're going to be able to help you work that particular problem out. Another reason it's so important for you to be working within your e-materials is that, one, it's going to allow you to download the Milestone 2 exactly formatted as your instructor wants it to be formatted. It's also adding to your final project paper that you'll be downloading at the very end of the term. So it's very important that everything is in its proper place within the e-materials as you're working forward. And also because the e-materials provide you with a very nice site feature within the uh, within the e-materials so you can click on the uh, if you type in hashtag site while you're writing it's going to pop up if you chose APA it's going to provide you with a selection of in-text cit uh, citations that you can include or if it's to rave in with a footnote that will be added in so that your material will be properly cited so do make certain that you are only working within the e-materials as you move forward and that you're not creating your own Word document for this particular assignment. Way back during week one, we had a discussion uh, about how history doesn't necessarily repeat itself. However, I do want you to know, and you should be realizing this by now, we can look for patterns in history. We can look for trends in history. So you may be asking yourself tonight, well, what are trends? You're also going to be hearing the word themes thrown about quite a bit, and you may be confused between what the difference between a theme and a trend is. When you're thinking uh, trends, think of patterns involving themes. And we'll get, let's dive more deeply into what those themes are. But here are some questions I want you to think about as you are reading your sources and as you are thinking about how to pick out trends uh, for your paper. Once again, and this probably sounds pretty, pretty obvious, but go back and double check your topic and more specifically double check that research question that goes along with your topic. That is when you can begin to look for themes. How do you identify themes? Well, if your topic, for example, is uh, the Social Security Act and the New Deal, as you read through your primary and secondary sources, you may realize that you begin to notice that uh, government intervention, particularly whether government intervention in the economy should be happening, uh, at the, what frequency, how much, or at all, keeps popping up pretty regularly in those sources. And then you realize, okay, uh, government intervention in the economy seems to be a theme I keep seeing over and over again as I'm reading. That will then alert you, once you've found that, that you need to be looking for patterns involving this that led up to the event. And two, remember within your e-materials, if you go back to chapter five, your e-materials actually pulled out themes for you that were tied to your subject. And we'll talk more about that aspect in a minute too. But then once you find your themes, you should then ask, okay, how can I create a question 
based on these themes and on the categories of society, culture, politics, economics, race, and gender. These are the angles that historians approach history. We have uh, some people are social historians, some people are political historians. So let's say your topic uh, is the American Revolution. Some historians, if they're uh, political uh, historians, they may be interested in, you know, uh, the actions, the political actions of men like Adams and Jefferson, for example, in the development of the country. Whereas someone who is an economic historian may be interested in the role, for example, that boycotts played in bringing uh, about the revolution. So those are different angles. But what you want to do is create a question involving your theme. Why is that important? Well, if you create a question involving your theme, that is going to help you identify patterns and trends that you will then be able to write about for this particular milestone. Let's take an example from one of the classes. And what I've pulled today is the example of the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Fire. So let's think about the topic. Uh, the student decides she's really going to be going to begin looking through her secondary sources. Now for this milestone to assignment, you do want to make certain that you're using at least one of your primary and one of your secondary sources. But your secondary sources are likely to really help you uh, to immediately begin to identify patterns that are tied to your topic. And then you can later bring in uh, once you've identified some themes, you can bring in some supporting detail from your primary sources. But she goes and looks at two articles, The Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Trial and The Politics of Mourning. And as she reads those articles, three themes stand out to her. She noticed that business regulation is constantly being discussed within these papers. There's also the theme of labor and industry relations. Each author continuously brings up the way that labor and industry, uh, what the relationship between those two things are. And repeatedly within her articles, she sees that the subject of working immigrant women appears over and over again. So then she creates questions with her categories to help identify themes. So in terms of the first two themes, she creates this question and says, prior to 1911, what was going on in the economy and with labor? And that's to help her find patterns involving those things. She goes back and reads the sources again. And another question that she develops is, up until 1911, how were immigrant women viewed in society? And she may even adjust that later on to say, how were working immigrant women viewed in society? Remember, when we went back, when we talked about uh, trends, when I introduced them to you last week, uh, and putting the milestones together, that webinar that was held on that topic, we talked about how trends set the scene for the topic that you are writing about. Trends, the trends section of your paper helps your reader understand the world that your event is taking place in. So for the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Fire, which was a great tragedy where many, uh, many men and women, but largely young immigrant women, died in conditions where doors were locked and they jumped uh, from high-rise buildings to escape the flames that engulfed the fire that they worked in, there were lots of concern. There arose lots of questions about safety regulations and expectations of workers. And because so many of those workers were women, that was something that was particularly seized on that moment. If you're going to understand why the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory is such a significant event in American history, you first need to understand what's going on with business regulation. What is going on with labor and industry relations? And how are working immigrant women being viewed? That's going to help your reader be much more comfortable about the topic when you actually launch 
into the defense of your thesis in the next portion of your paper, which will make milestone three. So again, you're going to use the questions that you create to help you search for trends within uh, the sources that you're using. Now remember, as you move forward too, that there are certain sources that you should be using to help you find the answers to your questions. Uh, first and foremost, you're going to be relying uh, on your secondary sources and your primary sources. Now, for this particular time, you should probably use a secondary source and a primary source. But why am I? Why do I keep going back to that secondary source? Because the writers of those secondary sources have laid groundwork in their own papers to help you understand events that were going on. Uh, that are also going to help you to identify patterns for your own paper. So I really recommend beginning there and then going to primary sources for additional support. But there are other resources as well. Now I do want to emphasize that your e-materials for citations within these assignments, they should amount to less than 10% of your citations for your final, final project. So use citations from your e-materials sparingly. But there are resources within your e-materials that is going to help you tackle Milestone 2, and you should be relying on them. For example, back in Chapter 5, yes, you need to go back and look at previous material in your e-materials. Go to Chapter 5 and go to the Analyze Your Trend section. Also visit the questions about the sources in the trends checkpoint section. What is great about those sections is that your e-materials has already identified two themes that you can then go and use to create questions that will help you identify trends for your topic. So go back to the Analyze Your Trends section and the Trends Checkpoint in Chapter 5. Your e-materials is giving you a give me uh, opportunity with identifying those themes. You can then go through your secondary and primary sources to look for patterns involving those themes. Another location that I recommend that you go to is to go back, return in your e-materials to chapter one, and go to the section where you chose your topic. That's going to take you back to those links that you can then click on and go to the section of your e-materials that discusses your event. There too, you're going to find ideas involving trends and involving themes. So use all of these resources at your disposal, but particularly take advantage of uh, those good examples that your e-materials are giving you for your topic. Once you begin to identify trends, you're seeing patterns, begin to write. And as you write, make certain that you are doing these two things. You should be explaining why these trends were important. And you should be exploring the relationship between the trend and the event. Remember again, tr trends set the scene. They help your reader understand the world that your event is taking place in. And you should be explicit in your writing to help your reader understand why it's important for them to be understanding what's been going on uh, with the themes that you've identified prior to the event that you're writing about because it's going to help them understand your argument that's going to follow later on within your paper. I'll, I will say to you too that as you work on Milestone 2, this is a great opportunity to discuss the trends that you see with other peers in the learning community. It's also a good opportunity to get advice from them. So in the live session, for example, uh, that was held on Wednesday night of week four, uh, one student noted that it was really useful 
when she downloaded her first milestone to then go check and make certain that uh, the citations had appeared within uh, uh, the proper spots where she had designated those to go because she realized when she downloaded uh, her milestone one that uh, the citations were sometimes out of place and then another student chimed in and said yes I had the same thing happen to me and I was able to go back and make adjustments so you see that was a, an important piece of information shared between those two students that another student said oh you know I think that happened to me and then she went back and checked and it had happened to hers too so between the three of them they helped uh, to make certain that they had identified this problem uh, that they were all encountering and it helped strengthen all of their work. Uh, other students have found that it's good to meet with other students who are sometimes not even sharing the same topic that they are but they're helping one another talk back and forth um, they're explaining their trends or what they see in trends and talking about the themes that they're seeing with one another and that too is helping them strengthen their own paper so think about coming to the learning community share your themes share the questions that you're developing uh, to help you find your trends even share your trends uh, not only will other students be there to provide feedback but I will be there to provide feedback as well to help you out so as you're there think about how you can respond and use the comments of others to improve your milestone to project so do come to the learning community and to if you just have questions at any point in this process please do come and post them we've had uh, some really good questions uh, some of the highlights that I will say that we've seen recently uh, we had one student ask um, okay is are the trends the same thing as the supporting claims that I made in milestone one uh, the answer to that is no these are different uh, you have those three supporting claims and you're later going to build evidence around that in milestone three but again the trends and particularly the two themes that you are pulling out from your topic to then go find trends that are related to those themes uh, those are separate things so come to us and make certain that you're asking these questions because it's really going to help you as you work on this milestone project future milestone project number three and your final project at the end of the term i look forward to seeing you in the learning community and as always be in touch with your questions